Hello everyone, it's Mike here from Grizzly. Firstly, thank you to everyone who watched our previous documentary and has liked or commented or subscribed to our channel. We really appreciate uh, your support. As we look to move beyond that subject into new areas, there are loads of exciting things that we find really interesting that we hope you will too. The trouble is, is that our interests go from historic shipwrecks to current wildlife and conservation issues. And there's nothing really to band things together except from the fact that we find them interesting as a production crew. So essentially we're going to be breaking these up into different strands of the channel and there will be other strands to come but um, the strand I'm here to talk to you about today is called Biome. It's essentially a project that's going to cover many areas of wildlife, ecology um, and the natural world. So we're basically teaming up with um, really good ecology and wildlife students who can essentially provide knowledge and expertise and what we bring to the table is um, our sort of ability to make films and our equipment. So we're working with two students at the moment. One is Roby Watkinson, the other is Emma Hodson. They have been making little films recently and I really like their work and we're teaming up with them to help provide them with that extra support in terms of camera gear and we're actually sending out these camera kits so they can make their films easily and then we edit them uh, and put them out for you all to see. So there's going to be a lot more content coming out that's being made not just by us but also by people who actually have the knowledge and the expertise within the sort of ecology field. As COVID persists and uh, our ability to go outdoors and make films is limited, restricted, um, we're launching a podcast called The Biome Podcast. Um, and this is actually gonna be hosted by Emma and Roby. So the important thing to mention is that there's gonna be weekly content going out um, from here on. So there's also going to be other various content within Biome that we'll be producing ourselves, little animations. That's all going to be involved in Biome, essentially anything that is ecology and wildlife focused. So I'm about to go into a video call with Roby and Emma um, and they're going to be able to talk about what they're interested in and what they're looking forward to sharing through the podcast or other documentaries. <laughs> Firstly, thank you, uh, Roby and Emma, for joining me today. Really great to have you involved. Really great to be involved. No, thank we're really, you. really happy to be involved. <laughs> How helpful is it going to be for us to kind of have this collaboration? Well, I think massively, massively helpful for us because we both want to go into filmmaking when we finish our degrees and we just, we, yeah, ramble endlessly about various animals and conservation topics. So to kind of be given the opportunity to collaborate with you guys and then actually engage um, an audience a bit more is is very exciting I think for both of us. It's been a pretty challenging year um, for reasons that don't really need mentioning. How important is it that um, like wildlife conservation and these ecology issues don't take a, a back seat? I think this year has taught us that more than anything the most important thing we should be focusing on is global wildlife conservation and global biodiversity conservation. The majority of the conservation sector doesn't get that much government funding. A lot of it comes from ecotourism um, and charitable donations, largely from people um, in Europe, North America, parts of South Asia and Australia. And obviously these are areas which have been really hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Travel has been massively limited. Um, and so conservation efforts around the world, and in particular in areas where this really is our last chance, have been really, really strongly impacted by this. The conservation industry relies on volunteer help um, sort of to carry out um, just vital conservation work. It's often not paid staff. And you have things, Roby touched on this, but um, sort of ecotourism is also a massive means of, of finance for the conservation sector. So things like the mountain gorillas, the reason they're doing so well at the moment is because you have tourists going in, you have a lot of money coming in from people coming in externally. And obviously with the pandemic, you haven't got people traveling, which is very challenging for them. I think, you know, we're a perfect example of the impact that volunteering can have on these conservation organizations as well. Um, so we were both meant to go abroad in the summer to do wildlife conservation volunteering. Um, you were going to go to the Galapagos, right, Emma? 
Yeah, I was going to be part of a research team there. And yeah, like you're saying, they need people to come in from outside because it, whether this is right or not, we've had this debate about the industry, but they need people to come in to volunteer for free so that they save costs that they can then use for conservation purposes. So they rely on people like us. And because you were going to be in Costa Rica, weren't you? Yeah, I was going to be in in Costa Rica doing macaw conservation. Uh, So that's been pushed back another year and a bit. Um, but I mean, I've been receiving all the emails from the place I was going to be working and they're saying, yeah, we're really desperate. We've had to cut back almost all of our, all of our staff who aren't entirely local, um, yeah. and operations which rely on this sort of thing, especially in quite, um, inaccessible terrain, uh, where often the work is the most important have been cut back massively. And so that, I think that's having a massive impact on the conservation sector. And also, I think in in Latin America in particular, I mean, we had the Amazon um, fires at the the start of this year. And then there's huge fires in Bolivia at the moment and across um, much of South and and Latin America. So not only have you got the the difficulties of the pandemic, but you've also got dealing with massive wildfires kind of ravaging the landscape and threatening sanctuaries and and conservation efforts as well so yeah very difficult year for conservation well that's exactly why i suppose we're 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 starting this really to really try and draw attention to these things is always going to be a good way you know for for us as a company to spend our time um and i'm sure it's the same for you as well yeah, absolutely. Costa Rica was on the cards. It's sort of still on the cards for next year. But as we develop the podcast, uh, what is it that you're looking forward to kind of researching and discussing with Emma? I think the thing I'm most looking forward to researching and rambling about is probably um, the species reintroductions in the UK, which is something that me and Emma already feel very passionate about. Um especially because we tend to think that we're fine. We have this weird mentality in the UK that wildlife conservation is something that other countries definitely must take really seriously and must have really high on their political agenda. But we seem to be weirdly unconcerned by the fact that, you know, we are the largest country in Europe, possibly the world, although I, I might, may, you might consider Madagascar in that regard. But we are certainly the largest com- country in Europe with none of our large native large sorry large native carnivores remaining, um, we're also the largest country in Europe with none of our large charismatic megafauna remaining. So, uh, just researching up until now throughout the pandemic because we've got nothing else to do, the amount of ecological degradation in the UK is staggering, and there's a certain hypocrisy I think in that we expect, you know, people across the world to conserve and live with really quite dangerous animals in some regards um but we're fundamentally opposed to bringing back the lynx or the wolf in the uk um so yeah i think on on my end definitely the species reintroductions i want to explore what's feasible and what's not feasible and actually beyond that what is ethically and morally our duty in 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 terms of you know kickstarting these fundamental natural uh, British ecological processes, which have just been stagnated and put on hold for the last 500,000 years back even further, uh, if you go to the interglacial period. And so I'm really looking forward to that part of it. Lovely. Uh, and so, Emma, uh, are there any kind of standout species or conservation issues which you're particularly enthusiastic about sharing on the podcast? I mean everything um but (laughs) I think particularly what I'm really looking forward to we're not looking forward to because it's quite a serious topic but what I want to raise awareness about um in particular is the vaquita crisis so they they're these tiny little um cetaceans so they look a bit like tiny dolphins um and it's very close to home for me because it's happening in off the coast of Mexico um, in the Sea of Cortez. So I was born and grew up in Mexico. So that's home for me. Um, and it's really quite sad seeing how their numbers have just plummeted. There's possibly less than 15 left in the world. And I think Roby and I, we, we talked about this recently in a podcast, but just it's a really good example of how everything's so intertwined and it's all so complex. So you think it might just be this small... Um, little porpoise off the coast of Mexico and that's where it stops 
it isn't. You've got sort of illegal cartels, you've got fishing happening at night, you've got boat chases, you've it's on the scale of kind of the drug wars that are happening and this tiny little dolphin is just caught up in it all. Um so yeah, kind of want to talk about that and then like Roby was saying, the um, kind of assessing the possibility of of what species we could bring back to the UK is very exciting, kind of almost turning back the clock um, because we've driven a lot of the species, a lot of species to extinction here in the UK, which we might not have realised and kind of assessing whether they could be brought back or not. um, I think, yeah, is something I'm looking forward to talking about. So especially with the amazing wildlife documentaries available, um, some may think that the wildlife in the UK can be uh, a little more sort of tame. Um, can you touch on some of the fascinating things that are happening right here on our doorstep? Yeah, me, um, me and you, Emma, we both had a weird moment. So obviously we both go to the same university um, and we both study zoology. And I remember, I think before one of our field trips to Pembrokeshire, we kind of we kind of thought that if you wanted to, you know, be a serious wildlife biologist or go into wildlife film, you have to go abroad and see, you know, lions and tigers and elephants and stuff. And I remember when we came out of that field trip, we were both like, wow, there is so much here. (laughs) So obviously we do live in a very cultivated and a very gardened landscape where, you know, much of the big, the big trophic cascades have been lost. Um, but we do still have so much going on. So we've spent uh, the limit, you know, the time where we've been limited by coronavirus going out and filming uh, wildlife. So we went and saw otters and uh, all sorts of water birds in South Pembrokeshire. Um, what else did we do? We went and looked for beavers. Um, yes, we went, beavers was the most recent one. Yeah, beavers and wild boar. We went on a wild boar hunt in the Forest of Dean. Um, which is very exciting. Yeah, and there's so much here, and there's so much more which is coming as well. So we've got white-tailed sea eagles now, which have been released on the Isle of Wight, and now they're all spreading around. And there's actually there's an online tracker, I think, you can track the eagles on. Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant website where you can follow them. And just that, that concept that you might not think the UK could be home to these majestic eagles but now they've been brought back. They weren't They weren't in the UK for hundreds of years because we drove them to extinction and they're now thriving. Um, like you mentioned in the Isle of Wight and then they're up in Scotland as well. And then with the beavers, they were driven to extinction in like the 16th century here in the UK. And now you've got populations of legal and illegal beavers, which are just <laughs> doing really well. Um, so yeah, there's there's so much happening in the UK and... I think Roby and I have really kind of appreciated that more recently and maybe with lockdown as well, kind of really, really just focusing on what is happening locally because there's some awesome stuff. Fantastic. That's super interesting. Like I'm more than anyone um, looking forward to kind of seeing some of the content that comes out of this. Our first episode, um, which we're recording um, soon, I think, is um, going to be the beaver introduction. So what's going on with, with beavers then? What isn't going on with beavers, I think, is the question. There's so much Everything happening is going with beavers. On with beavers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start with the beavers, Emma? Yeah, I'll start. Oh, yeah, like you said, there's so much happening and kind of a lot that I didn't realise before we decided to go on our little beaver adventure. I had um, no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, because I got this, I have a magazine and it's got this brilliant map and show it, it shows the legal and illegal beaver populations um, that are there. And I got really excited and I rang Roby and I'm like, Roby, Roby, you have to see this map. Like there's loads of illegal beavers. Um, but also it was quite shocking, I think, reading about how much they were exploited. Um, so just the idea that humans always tend to do that. They exploit animals to the point to the point of extinction, which is what That's happened kind with of the beavers. Mojo, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and for beavers, it was just the weirdest thing. So this is going to sound a bit weird, but this is all linked to beavers. Um, so... <laughs> I love that disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> so it's the idea. So they were exploited for absolutely everything. So they made sort of pendants out of their teeth. They made hats. 
um, out of their fur. Um, but they were also hunted excessively for their testicles and their anal gland secretions, um, which just goes to show it's like humans really do find a way to just exploit absolutely everything. The basis with the beavers in the UK, at least, so they were hunted to extinction um, probably before 1600, but there's one tantalising uh, record in Yorkshire, perhaps, later than that. Um, and then they were a candidate for reintroduction, um, which is obviously super exciting and an incredibly uh, worthwhile thing to do, um, both for the benefits for them and for us. Uh, and so the reintroduction went ahead in Scotland and then people realised, oh, there are already some beavers here, which makes them technically illegal beavers, which is a whole sentence you can unpack yourself. Um, and so, yeah, we've had this convoluted story with people saying, yes, we want beavers, but legal beavers and then illegal beavers. And are they the right kind of beavers? Because there are more than one kind of beaver. Um, it was crazy. But now we do have populations of beavers in the UK and in England. So. Are there, are there any uh, behavioural differences between the illegal ones and the legal ones? Are the illegal ones just a bit more edgy, you know, a bit more unpredictable? <laughs> <laughs> they stay out quite late at night with their friends, you know. Yeah, they're definitely more rebellious, especially yeah. the ones, the, what is it, Tayside? You've got, lo- it's like 250 um, illegal beavers um wow. which they're not entirely sure how they got there we had this kind of discussion about they might have escaped from a local i have a theory wildlife yeah. part yes you yeah. have a lot of theories i have many valid theories they're all you know they're brilliant yeah <laughs> well very much looking forward to um hearing more on this then so this episode is um gonna be out um next week this will be our first episode of our podcast i think it's a great place to start um, really looking forward to hearing about it and thank you so much for kind of taking the time to speak to me here and really looking forward to hearing what you come up with fantastic can't wait yeah no we're re- really excited so hopefully you will know a little bit more about biome now and what kind of content is going to be going out under biome we are still grizzly and there will be other strands like biome that might have more of a historic side, which we are working on developing. But anytime you see biome, that's gonna be our uh, ecology and wildlife focused content. So the best way to keep up with us is definitely by subscribing to this channel. If you haven't subscribed already, then I would please encourage you to, because it really, really helps our um, development. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram. It's biome by grizzly, all lowercase. That's B-I-O-M-E by grizzly and uh, it's also the same for Facebook and Twitter. So please subscribe, um, and our first video is gonna be released in a matter of days. Thank you.